weekend was on what we call collective intelligence, and in particular, the focus of this weekend is on creating generative collaboration. We can expand our potential and our capabilities through our interactions with others, through mutual trust and respect, so that something new can emerge. There are three fundamental dynamics that happen to create collective intelligence. The first is resonance. So resonance means where are we the same? There's also a somatic mind, we say, an emotional intelligence that's necessary to have this collective intelligence. And thirdly, there's what we call a field mind. It's a sort of relational sense, a relational feel. Other exercises have to do with what we would call synergy, making synergy. Synergy is where our differences actually become an advantage. The process we use there was what we call masterminding. Uh, another name for it is intervision, where we literally bring together different perspectives, focusing them on the same kind of goal or the same kind of topic, but each one is sort of filling in something that the others miss. So there's a very delicate balance between structure and freedom, and to create generative collaboration you need both, especially in an organization. One of the key notions in collective intelligence is this idea that we call whole-on, and as a whole-on, I am also part of successively bigger holes. A family, uh, you know, a community, a profession, a planet. Where problems often happen is when these parts become separated from their larger whole. One of our key practices was what we call the COACH state. It's an acronym that means centered, open, alert or aware, connected, and then able to hold a kind of this bigger space. When we are in this space, we are connected to this bigger whole on and things flow easily. That's where collective intelligence can really come very smoothly and easily in a group. Actually, in collective intelligence, there are going to be necessary moments of chaos where things are organizing or reorganizing. That's where people start to what we call crash. Crash is another acronym. It means I contract, I react, I get caught in analysis paralysis, I separate. And instead of being able to hold what's happening from a place of curiosity and resourcefulness, I, I find myself hurt or hurting others. I get stuck in some kind of um, you know, difficult feeling. I need to be myself in a group. At the same time, I need to be in service of something beyond myself. And again, usually where the obstacles and problems happen is where there's difficulty in managing that balance. Our state is a filter on the world. And what we give and what we receive in our interactions with others are all filtered through our nervous system. The state of that nervous system determines exactly the quality of our experience. It's a mindful state of presence. If I am not present, I'm not going to be able to accomplish nearly as much. There's an inner game and an outer game. So the outer game, I have outer goals, I do need to deal with outer obstacles. On the inner game, I have inner goals, there's inner resources and inner obstacles. If I am not succeeding in my inner game, I will definitely not succeed in the outer game. Every athlete knows that. What you do depends upon your mindset. One of our basic principles is our actions come from our mindset. The reason that the state, this meditation is so important is that everything comes from there. We cannot control what happens in the world around us. We can choose how we meet it. Mm -hmm.